Okay, this video is just a quick follow-up on some of the things we talked about in history class today. You're supposed to read the Roman Republic Part 1 today. There's two pages of reading on it and take notes on it, which is due our next meeting class. Um, if you remember discussing in class, we talked about how Rome started out as being run by kings, then they kicked out the kings, and they switched to a republic. The republic is a largely democratic form of government, which has elected officials in it that then make rules and laws for everybody else. The reality was that you had two consuls, okay, oops, over here, at the top, which is like having two presidents, they're co-rulers, and then underneath them was a senate that held the real power, and they were a group of wealthy people. Now, you'd think that the people at the top, the consuls, would be the ones that would make the decisions, but the senate, which was made up of largely wealthy people, is the ones that held all the power and made all the decisions. After a while, you had basically some class struggle, like what we talk about over here. This is between the wealthy people, the haves, the patricians, and the plebeians, the have-nots, the poor people, the working class. Um, the poor people wanted to be able to have a voice in government. The wealthy people didn't want to give them a voice in government. They wanted to hold them to the power and have them keep working for them. The idea was that the wealthy people, the patricians, would be like patrons and uplift their clients, which would be their workers, and help them grow through time. Some did, some didn't. Um, but what ended up happening is, after a while, the people agitated for reform and change. So there was a law that was passed called the Lex Hortensia. This law changed and created a people's assembly. So then you have basically three different layers in the government, the consuls, the senate, and the people's assembly. There's a few other components of government too, but this is kind of like the big overview for what we look at right now. The people's assembly was supposed to be a group and a governing body for the common people to be able to make, create, pass, and veto laws. In reality, though, the power still resided with the Senate. After a period of time, this led to a lot of discontent, work stoppages, strikes, and then you had some civil war starting from there. Rome started out small, grew large, had class struggle the whole way through, and they also had slavery the whole way through. Not the kind of slavery we're experiencing here in the United States when we think of civil war slavery, but they had debt slavery, prisoners of war slavery, people sold into slavery. It wasn't solely based upon your ethnicity, your cultural location, um, or geography, or anything like that. Um, but it was a widespread chunk of their population. And remember, Rome lasted for well over a thousand years, and they had slavery throughout much of that time. A lot of persecution um, of religious minorities and things like that as well. Your reading tonight covers the consuls, the senate, the assembly, the lex hortensia, the People's Assembly, um, and then also starts to talk about some of their civil wars and then some of their other conquests as they spread out and ends up talking about the First Punic War, which is when they went to war with a country called Carthage, um, which is headquartered in Africa. Now, this gives you a quick overview of what's going on from those things. Um, I gave a little bit more in the class detail lecture today. It should hopefully jog some memories for you. Read through the reading. Take notes on it, paragraph by paragraph. Look for italicized words, bold print words. Um, things like Quaestor, um, Pontifex Maximus. Those are in that first page that I didn't go over in class with you. You should be able to put those down there too. Okay? Look forward to seeing you next class.